Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. So in this video, we're diving into like the access cavity preparations for molars, both maxillary and mandibular. This is a key part of um, endodontic treatment and understanding the typical internal anatomy of these teeth is like really critical when you're managing molar cases. So let's break it down. We'll start with the maxillary first molar, which is like one of the most complex teeth in terms of uh, root and canal anatomy. It usually has three roots, the mesiobuccal, distobuccal, and palatal, and typically contains like four pulp horns. The mesiobuccal root often has two canals, and finding that second canal, the so-called MB2, is uh, essential. It's usually located like palatal and slightly mesial to the first mesiobuccal canal. The outline of the access cavity is um, rhomboid shaped and it's widest in the buccolingual dimension. The three main orifices, mesiobuccal, distobuccal, and palatal, form what's called the molar triangle. The palatal canal is usually the largest and like the easiest to locate, while the mesiobuccal can be a bit more elusive, especially if there's an MB2. Now, moving to the maxillary second molar, it's like quite similar to the first molar coronally, but its roots are often uh, closer together and they may even be fused. The canal anatomy can vary a lot. Like sometimes you'll only find two or three canals instead of four and access should still follow a rhomboid or triangular shape depending on like what you find clinically. Now the maxillary third molar is um, super unpredictable. It can have like one to four roots and up to six canals. The access can be kind of challenging, especially due to like the distal or buccal inclination of the tooth. So yeah, you'll definitely want to approach these with caution and only do endo if there's like a clear indication and a realistic prognosis. Let's move on to the mandibular molars, starting with the first molar, which is like the most commonly treated tooth in endodontics. It usually has two roots, mesial and distal, and often presents with uh, three or four canals. In the mesial root, you'll typically find a mesiobuccal and a mesiolingual canal, and like sometimes a third canal in between called the middle mesial. The distal root can have one or two canals, and occasionally even three. The access cavity here is usually like trapezoidal or rhomboid, depending on the number and position of the canals. You'll want to be mindful of like develop, developmental grooves between canal orifices, especially in the mesial root, and uh, always watch out for anatomical variations like radix intomolaris or radix paramolaris, which are like extra roots found distalingually or mesiobuccally. Now, as for the mandibular second molar, it's a bit smaller and like more symmetric compared to the first molar. The roots are usually um, closer together and may even be fused. This tooth might have anywhere from like one to four canals. So when there are just two canals, like one in each root, the access shape is usually more rectangular. But if there's a single root with like one large canal, then your access is more centrally placed and um, oval shaped. Finally, the mandibular third molar, like the maxillary third, is, yeah, really variable. Root morphology can be pretty unpredictable. You might find one to four roots and like up to six canals. Some of these even have uh, C-shaped canals, especially in mandibular thirds and those can make cleaning and shaping like really challenging. So in a lot of cases, the decision to treat really depends on access, the available canal morphology, and um, the long-term prognosis. All right, so that wraps up our uh, overview of access cavity preparation for molars. As always, the key is, is understanding the underlying anatomy and like staying flexible with your approach. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll uh, catch you in the next video.